Amanda Swanson was a passenger on that train when it derailed. She joins me now on the phone. I, uh, Amanda, first of all, let, let me just ask you're on the phone with us. I am hoping that you are fine and uninjured. Um, I Yes, I actually uh, wound up um, probably one of the least injured people on the train. I'm actually safely in Harlem. I left the scene early. Probably shouldn't have, but it, I wasn't in the right mind state to be making perfect decisions. Um, I, uh, it was actually kind of overwhelming to hear all of that that I just heard in your control room. Yeah, it's, it, I think we are showing right now on our screen, I'm not sure you can see it, some pictures that you took po post the derailment, I think. What were you to describe to us what was going on at that point with you? What, during the accident? Well, the, I understand. Well, that. We're looking at the picture you took. What's happening during that? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not in a place where I can see what you're showing right now. I apologize. Um, okay. Tell but, us. Uh, I, yeah. did, I, I know that I took a few outside of the train and then also one from the inside of the train. Right. Um, uh, as far as uh, as far as during the crash, I was actually nodding off, and I wound up waking up because I felt that my body seemed to be at like a 60 to 45 degree angle, even though I was sitting upright in my chair, and I knew that didn't feel quite right. And I opened my eyes just in time to realize what was going on, and I could hear the screeching of metal over the music in my headphones, and so I just kind of became immediately aware of what was going on, uh, clutched all my personal belongings so as not to lose them, and then just kind of rode out the crash and uh, just tried to stay conscious and aware so that I could do whatever I could on my end to stay alive and uninjured. Um, and then once the train came to a complete stop, I was in one of the cars that was completely on its side. Um, and as soon as I realized that I was okay, or at least as okay as I could have been in that moment, I just immediately took my phone out and call the police. And so, if I hear you correctly, you awoke as the train was literally derailing from the track, and eventually... Right, as it was starting. Right. Uh, how many people were in the car with you? Were you able to see, when, when you went to get out, what, was, what did you see around you? Um, well, people uh, obviously move in opposite directions uh, towards opposite ends of the car. Um, from, if I had to guess, uh, there was about there was about eight to twelve people around me, but on the other side of the same cab was probably an equal number on that side. Um, I could hear that people were injured. I could hear moaning, and I heard a couple uh, men uh, communicating to each other that someone was stuck, and they were trying to do what they could to either help or just make sure that person was all right. Um, whereas on my side of the train, the emergency doors and the like regular doors had all been open, so even though we couldn't get out because we were on our side, we could at least see fresh air. And uh, I wound up being on the phone with the police for a while until the uh, first responders showed up. And so you, you could physically not get out because essentially the train on its side, even though the windows above you were open, you, you couldn't climb out. We couldn't get out. We were tall enough. There was nothing right. to climb on. Plus the fact that we didn't know, since we couldn't see out, where exactly we were, how close to the river we were, if there was even any land for us to climb onto. You know, that area is very hilly and, of course, you know, obviously right on the Hudson. So right. my first concern was just, did I see water in the train? In my particular car, I did not. So the safest thing was for us to just stay put and wait for the FDNY. And describe to me first the phone call that you made. Were they aware of the crash? And then tell me um, about the rescue. Uh, the uh, as far as the phone call goes, it seems to me that at least for whoever uh, I was dispatched to was unaware um, because she was not taken by surprise, but just de definitely had to take down the information. And I was sorry I couldn't give her more, but at least I was coherent. Uh, and then a couple minutes into. The conversation she then alerted me that she was starting to receive more calls um they just uh she just kept me on the line told me to remain calm um which we were all trying to keep each other calm on the train and uh i, I don't have an honest amount of time like you know it's a little fo foggy but i was i was very impressed with how quickly i did hear sirens and then within minutes of hearing sirens the, uh, the fire department had uh come down um they appeared at the top on the roof of well you know the side of the train um and a couple of the firefighters came in through the open doors, climbed down, and immediately started assessing the triage and making sure that they found the most injured people first. Um, 
after uh, after a few minutes of that and them all just communicating with each other, trying to formulate a plan to get us out due to the kind of like sporadic nature of the uh, terrain in that particular area, uh, those of us who were ambulatory and were capable of climbing out, some with assistance of the FDNY, were climbed out through the emergency doors and then walked up through the, uh, like, through the broken trees and stuff along the side of the Hudson uh, to safety. And then, um, and that's where they started collecting us all in a group so that they could go around and assess uh, the injuries. Um, I was very lucky to be in a car where it seemed that most of the people around me, the injuries were minor, very minor, um, for the most part. And it wasn't even until I got out and I saw those other pictures that I took of the train on its side and, the, you know, those um, that I realized how, how bad it was. And then when I got to the base camp kind of area and saw all the people on stretchers, that was when I kind of started to get a little panicky. Like, not for my own self, but just I just realized the gravity of the situation. And am I hearing you correctly? So what, what happened, those of you who were ambulatory and relatively uninjured were, were hoisted up by the emergency personnel that had climbed um, into the train? The, uh, the, the side doors at the back of the train where you move between trains, um, some of them in the cars that were uh, a little less contorted uh, were able to spring open. Mm -hmm. So we could climb out the side much more easily so that was how that was how the people on my end of the train got out i can't clearly attest for the people in the other cars that had more complicated uh situations there were some cars that like all the windows were broken out and there were some cars where the doors were open some of the doors were closed so i'm sure the rescue attempts in each individual car was probably vastly different from each other well from from what i understand amanda you probably were pretty lucky because the fatalities uh were apparently in the cars that went on their sides, which is you were in one of those. You sound so calm. Were were you this calm throughout the whole uh, the whole ordeal, or, or was there panic? Um, the, when it first was happening, when I became aware that I was in the middle of a train crash, I kind of had a very brief conversation with myself where I was like, "Okay, Amanda, this is that moment." you're going to stay awake, you're going to stay guarded, and you're going to live through this. And it sounds silly, but that was just, it was important to me that I do that. It's important to me to get to call my parents when this was over. Um, so uh, with that, there was only the actual moment of the final impact when the train came to a complete stop that I felt like I didn't, I no longer like had cognizance or control. Um, but then just the way the train landed and the fact that I could clearly stand up, I'm actually surprised to hear you say, I, I assumed, because like I said, I'm not anywhere with TV right now. I actually have very little information on the situation. Um, I, uh, I assumed that the, that the more severe injuries were in other cars right. that were maybe la that landed in different ways. Cause yeah. I, uh, I definitely well, feel like I've just serendipitously picked the best seat on that train today. Yeah, you were, you 